Hi, I'm QDC. What we're going to build today is Tamiya's World War II Woolies Jeep. Um, the reason why I bought this particular kit is because of two reasons. The first reason is that I've never built a Woolies Jeep before and I just simply want to build it. This is such an iconic um, vehicle of World War II, I just want to build it. And also, the reason why I bought this kit was because I actually had a chance to drive a World War II Woolies Jeep. It's kind of a long story. I have a friend who was into hot rods and he bought a World War II Woolies Jeep uh, as a third owner. The second owner bought the Woolies Jeep from the United States government as an army surplus and so um, he drove it around, painted the entire Woolies Jeep yellow with ordinary house paint and after a few years he got tired of driving it so he parked it in his barn and then for the next 20 something years it is to be rusted away. When my friend got that Woolies Jeep, uh, the rust also rusted the engine as well because it was made out of iron. He somehow got the engine to work again and so I had a chance to drive the Woolies Jeep. What I found out about the Woolies Jeep is that it's a fun car to drive but only at low speeds. Uh, under 30 miles an hour, it's a fun car to drive but if you go beyond 30 miles an hour and make sharp turns, the Jeep has a tendency to flip over. So that's my story. So let's go ahead and start building this kit now. Let's go take a look inside this box. We have the body. Um, the hood. The chassis. And it uh, looks like right here is the engine. The wheels guns, the figure, and the axles, the decal, and the instruction sheet. Okay folks, these instruction sheets are, it's very simple to make. Um, Tamiya has made, um, you know, they always make their kits, for the most part, fairly simple. And this one is no exception. Um, this has 13 uh, steps in this instruction sheet and it was designed for almost all types of skill levels. Uh, I'm going to follow everything from 1 to 13 exactly on this particular instruction sheet and I don't think there's going to be any problems. This is going to be easy folks, an easy kit to build. Let's go ahead and go for it. Let's go ahead and build this kit right now. Alright. So I just uh, completed the, the entire construction of the model kit and now it's time for me to um, give you some comments about what I think about this model kit so far. Take a look. This is the completed model kit before painting and as you can well see it's a very good uh, model kit. What I like um, the best about the kit is really just everything. Uh, to me it has made um, another good model kit. They always seem to, really. And um, I like the wheels. The wheels are very nice and detailed along with the um, equipment to take the shovel. The grill looks pretty um, realistic. And the interior looks nice along with the, uh, the stick shift, the steering wheel, and the figure looks pretty good too. The figure looks very, very nice with that good pose right there, all relaxed and looking out towards somebody. And the um, the uh, the chassis looks pretty good too. It was by using pin washing. I just painted the model figure, and as you can well see, it looks pretty good actually. Now, what I couldn't show you on my camera is that I painted the face. I gave I gave it the eyeballs and um, painted with various shades of, uh, of of skin tone to give it a real realistic appearance. The reason why I couldn't do that is because um, I just couldn't use my camera to uh, help you see how well I've done the face. It was really hard for me to do that because I had to look behind the camera in order to paint, and it's just something I couldn't do. I repainted the jacket uh, because um, it didn't stand out so I hand painted each individual fold 
so the jack would stand out. I just installed my home hood because now it's time for me to paint the Jeep. So if you plan to use enamel spray paints like I do, then it's always a good idea to use a hood to, um, to vent all the vapors out into the open. And it's always a good idea to wear a pair of safety goggles, just like I'm about to do, because it's always good to be on the safe side. So let's go ahead and start painting. And the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to paint, the, um, give the entire Jeep a coat of primer. I want to give shadows on my Jeep, so I'm going to paint the entire model black. I just removed my hood because from here on out, I'm going to use a quick spray paint. And now I'm going to paint the main color. I want to give my model um, grime appearance, so I'm going to use a dark wash. What you see right here is a um, a dilution of black artist oil paint and mineral spirits. And I'm going to simply give this entire model a wash by applying this onto the entire model. It's time for me to do some dry brushing. What you see right here is a lighter color of the all in drab that I painted on the kit. And what is dry brushing is that I'm just highlighting the, um, the highlights by taking a lighter color of the all in drab, taking most of the paint off, and then lightly brush onto the model to give it highlights. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to give rain and uh, mud streaks. I'm putting a dab of buff color right there, right there, and right there. And then I'm going to put a dot of um, dark brown right there, right there, right there, and right there. Then I'm going to use a moistened brush and lightly brush down to make streaks. I'm going to simulate some bare metal by using an ordinary uh, lead pencil. I'm going to add mud effects. Um, what you see right now, right here, is diluted yellow glue. And I'm going to brush that onto the inner fender. And then I'm going to use towel grout as mud and I'm going to simply just put it on there to simulate mud. A friend of mine, Hannah Marbarcus, on YouTube um, had a video on how to actually uh, simulate um, splashed mud. Right now you're seeing is um, white glue diluted in towel grout. He actually used white glue diluted in um, big pigments. But what he done was he wet um, the solution onto an ordinary, ordinary brush and then he used an airbrush and just carefully spread it on. I like the way I built this kit, so I decided that I wanted to make this into a diorama. So I went to my local craft store and bought this uh, base and stained it. And I'm going to use pre-mixed towel grout as my ground cover base. And then I'm going to use static grass and some ordinary railroad grass um, to put into my ground base. <laughs> 